Hey folks, this is Kalani. Battle for Azeroth is just around the corner, but before we get there we're going to have to relearn our classes once again in patch 8.0. Well, some of us will have to learn them again, some lucky few will have a setup where practically nothing changes. I guess they could be the unlucky few as well, depending on how you view change. It's not that strange for Blizzard to reinvent the wheel whenever a new expansion rolls around. Some classes like mages won't be seen much happening at all, whereas other classes will have to learn specs which have been turned upside down. Well, let's have a look at how Warlocks specifically are shaping up in the pre-patch and Battle for Azeroth, what are they good at, where do they fall short, and ultimately, are they worth playing? Warlocks are locked into the DPS role, no matter how badly they wish they could tank. Demonology focuses on summoning a vast army of demons to do your bidding. Destruction plays much more like a standard caster spec with direct damage, and Affliction is the king of damage over time. Let's take a dive into Demonology first, because quite a few things have changed. So I said the main focus of Demonology is to summon a mini legion army. And while that's sort of always been the case, Battle for Azeroth actually lets you assemble an army. You can have so many demons active at once, from fell imps, dread stalkers, vile fiends, tyrants, and of course, your usual selection of normal demon pets. There is a little bit of ramp up to get your army going, but once you've spent a few global cooldowns, you should be well on your way to domination. The main way you build up your army is through Hand of Gul'dan and summon Dreadstalkers. These abilities cost soul shards, which is the main resource you're going to be juggling with every warlock spec. Demonology is pretty straightforward when it comes to soul shards. Shadowbolt generates one, Demon Bolt generates two. There's not really any RNG involved, which is fantastic and makes the spec a lot of fun to play. You typically won't be hard casting Demon Bolt, one of your passives that triggers when your Dreadstalkers expire, or has a chance to trigger when your imps expire, makes Demon Bolt instant cast, and it has a really long cast time otherwise. It's like hard casting a pyroblast without your braces procs, it's just not worth it. So instant cast demon bolts will provide you with a whole bunch of soul shards which you can spend to make your army bigger. The bigger your army, the more chances you have for instant demon bolts, the more soul shards you get to generate an even bigger army. It snowballs pretty fantastically. The single target damage potential for demonology seems quite high, if you can get things rolling quickly enough. They have been the target of quite a few nerfs already, mainly because they were absolutely destroying anything they gave a sideways glance, but their damage has been toned down quite significantly at this point and if they go any further, they might end up on the lower end of some DPS meters. I think the playstyle and theme for Demonology are great, but I do have quite a big problem with the spec as a whole. Outside of Implosion, which you probably won't want to be using willy-nilly, you don't really have any instant cast spells to use when you have to move. And my gosh, do you have to move in some of these dungeons. Ground effects are off the charts in Battle for Azeroth, and the lack of decent mobility, coupled with the lack of instant cast spells, is pretty detrimental to your DPS and probably to your enjoyment. Thankfully, there are a few answers to this problem. The first would be to hold on to a charge or two of your instant demon bolts. You don't have to spend them right away, and they give you a powerful instant cast spell for the few seconds of movement you need to get out of the fire. The other options come from talents, which can make your dreadstalkers cost one less soul shard and make it instant. Again, very valuable for high movement environments. There's a talent which allows you to sacrifice two of your wild imps to gain two charges of instant demon bolt, so you wouldn't have to hold on to those charges as often, and it gives you some strong burst potential. So it's not the end of the world, but when you compare your options to something like a mage, who can just shimmer across the entire room without even having to break their current cast, it's a little disheartening. And while the single target potential seems pretty decent, to get some decent AoE damage you usually have to blow up your army. While that is pretty fun and hilarious to watch, building up your army again does take a little bit of time. This means you have quite a lot of potential for some huge AoE burst, but it takes a lot of time to get there and blowing up all of your imps might put you further behind in the long run. The lack of on-demand AoE might leave you trailing a little bit behind on big AoE pulls. Thankfully, you do have some talent choices to help with AoE. There's one which sends in your Felguard for a massive blade storm so you can pretend to have an arms warrior pet, and there's also one which turns your Dreadstalker's first hit into an AoE. You can also spend some more soul shards to enlist a wave of Scourge bombers, but I enjoy keeping my soul shards handy for more fell imps. Perhaps the best part of Demonology is that it's very reliable. You know how many soul shards you're going to generate from each spell, and you know how many you're going to spend, so there's a very nice ebb and flow to the rotation, which I do enjoy quite a lot. 
As I did with the Paladin video, I want to have a look at some notable or exciting Azerite traits, if we can find any. Here's an interesting one with a familiar effect. Cold Dreadstalkers has a 30% chance to make your next non-instant Demon Bolt deal quite a good chunk of additional damage. Now, where have we seen that sort of effect before, I wonder? I told you Demon Bolt was basically a pyroblast. Hard casting, such as long casts, can be a little boring, so how about some more haste for blowing up a bunch of imps? It only lasts for 6 seconds though, not the greatest bonus in the world. You can also get a trait which gives Hand of Gul'dan a chance to refund some soul shards, which could be really useful if you combine that with a talent which refunds soul shards. Free Hand of Gul'dans for everyone. Let's move on over to the Destruction spec. Destruction hasn't really changed on a very basic level for quite a while now. You use Immolate and Incinerate to generate soul shards, which you then want to spend on Chaos Bolt. Lots of direct damage, lots of high damage nukes. Havoc also allows Destruction to cleave better than almost any other spec, even if the two targets are on the opposite ends of the room. Now, Destro damage has been nerfed a little bit recently, and Havoc has been the target of quite a few nerfs for a while now. It seems like the dev team doesn't want us cleaving quite as well as we currently can. That might get reduced even further before BFA goes live, but the way that Havoc works means Destro locks will always excel on fights with two targets. Destro locks are all about fire and brimstone. If they didn't summon up demonic servants, you might mistake them for a fire mage. Usually you'd find yourself stocking upon soul shards, throwing out havoc onto an unsuspecting victim, and launching some sped up chaos bolts right into the face of, hopefully, two targets. A lot of your damage will come from those chaos bolts, so it's important to make sure you don't waste soul shards and you don't get interrupted trying to cast chaos bolt. There's nothing more frustrating than winding up that glorious nuclear weapon, only for something to slightly knock you to the side. You've got to prepare pair again, take the appropriate stance, wind up the Chaos Bolt, and get knocked to the side again. Honestly, I don't think any class suffers from this kind of abuse more than a Destro Lock. You need to make sure you're in a safe spot before unleashing your stocked up firepower, otherwise you're not going to be a happy chappy. With that being said, not much has changed for Destro Locks with the exception of Summon Infernal. It's now a 3 minute DPS cooldown which also doubles up as another AoE stun. Put that together with Shadow Fury and Destro Locks are the only class which brings two AoE stuns to a group, making them quite valuable for Dungeons and Mythic Plus. They do suffer from the same movement problems as Demonology, but at least you have Conflagrate to use on the move. You can pick up Shadowburn from the talent section too if you really need another instant cast. While their single target damage is pretty decent and their cleave damage is exceptionally good, Destro locks fall a little short as you start to add in more and more enemies. There's only so much they can do, and with Reign of Fire costing 3 soul shards, you've got some hard choices to make. I think if you enjoyed Destro during Legion, it should be familiar enough to still get some enjoyment out throughout Battle for Azeroth. Let's see if there's any fun Azerite powers to be had for destruction. Here's one which gives Chaos Bolt a little extra oomph and gives it a chance to make your next Incinerate instant, one that grants you bonus intellect for every spell you copy to a Havoc target, which stacks, basically giving you some free damage whenever you're able to make good use of Havoc, and then how about this one? Summoning your Infernal increases the damage of your next 8 Chaos Bolts. Not by a huge amount, sadly, but it is the next 8 Chaos Bolts. By the time you're fully equipped in awesome Azerite gear, your Chaos Bolts will probably be hitting like mega trucks. And let's finish this off by checking out Affliction, which might be the only Warlock spec which doesn't have serious problems with moving and casting. Quite a few of their spells are instant, but you're still going to get majorly frustrated if you have to move a bunch right as you want to start unloading your unstable Afflictions. In case you haven't heard, the main filler spell for Affliction has changed from Drained Soul back to Shadow Bolt, so if that's something you loved or hated about Affliction during Legion, well, now I guess you can love or hate Shadow Bolt again. You can pick up Drained Soul in the Talent section if that's a serious make or break change, but I do enjoy having Shadow Bolt back. Affliction plays out pretty similarly to Legion as well. Dot up your targets with Agony and Corruption, save up a few Soul Shards and unleash all hell with your unstable Afflictions. Sadly, a lot of what made Affliction work so well was jam-packed into their artifact weapon, which we don't have anymore. It definitely feels like a bit of a shell of its former self. You can still spread your dots to as many targets as you want, you can still throw out Seeds of Corruption and laugh as they blow up in your enemies' faces, and you're still going to be a cleave god on those encounters where there's two or three bosses because no one spreads damage over time quite like an Affliction Warlock. It all just feels a little watered down. We do have a new cooldown in the form of Summon Dark Glare. This works quite a lot like Destruction's Infernal in that it's a 3 minute cooldown and boosts pretty much everything that you do. It extends the duration of your damage over time effects and it deals more damage for each dot you have on the target. Very useful indeed. 
Sadly, Affliction does seem to be in a bit of a poor state right now. It might just be because damage over time specs have quite a bit of a ramp up, and they typically don't do that well if targets die very quickly, which is pretty much all you're going to see while leveling in early dungeons and even lower Mythic Plus keys. On bosses and dungeons and raids, as well as some higher Mythic Plus keys, you might get a chance to shine, but whether you'll manage to surpass Demonology or Destruction in the same DPS spot remains to be seen. The most frustrating part of Affliction Warlock for me is that your Soul Shard generation is completely random. The only the only way to generate soul shards semi-reliably is through agony. Whenever it deals damage, there's a chance for you to get a soul shard. That's kind of it. That means you can be swimming in shards or just left high and dry for half of a boss fight. Compare that to Demonology, where every Shadow Bolt gives you a shard and every Demon Bolt gives you two, the gameplay is just night and day. Demonology is reliable. Affliction is random. Even Destruction has reliable resource generation, with some added in RNG for extra fragments, but leaving a good chunk of your damage up to the roll of the dice is never a great feeling in my opinion. Let's quickly browse through their Azerac traits to see if anything stands out. You can increase the benefits of stacking your unstable afflictions with this trait, you get a little bit of haste whenever you stack them up, you can give Agony a bit of a damage boost and allow it to start at 4 stacks, just remove a little bit of that ramp up time and potentially it's going to be pretty good in AoE situations, and how about reducing the cooldown of our big demonic summon the Dark Glare by one second every time you use Unstable Affliction. Overall, I think Warlocks are going to be in a decent spot. Demonology is new enough to bring a lot of players back to Warlock or to the class for the first time. It really plays well and gives pretty decent results. Destruction seems to be one of the favourite specs for dungeon goers as you get into Mythic Plus. I see a lot of Demonology Warlocks in leveling dungeons, but almost exclusively Destruction Warlocks in Mythic and Mythic Plus groups. I haven't really played with any Affliction Warlocks almost at all, and I don't really blame them for playing the other more exciting specs right now. Warlocks bring a lot of utility to a group, whether it be a dungeon or raid. They have an AoE stun, two if you're running destruction, they can provide the entire team with health stones for a bit of extra healing, they have a battle res, summoning stone, and their gateway can be really useful as well. If nothing else, warlocks will always be valued for their utility. It's also pretty cool that each of their specs plays differently as well. Variety is always nice when you're stuck to just DPSing. What do you think of Warlocks from what you've seen so far? Do you plan to play a Warlock in Battle for Azeroth? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon. If you want to hop on that train, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.